What's happening? Uh, let me tell you a story while the crowd gathers. So a uh, longtime friend of mine, another singer and guitarist like myself, uh, we, uh, for a short time, I lived uh, with him and he asked me to teach him the scales because he had never had to worry about them previously. He was a solo singer and guitarist, uh, but then he got a loop station, if you know what that is. Uh, you can record yourself playing a little, you know, chord track, and then while you're playing live, you know, and then solo over it, and you know, when you when you play it back. Anyway, that's just a quick rundown. Anyway, he decided he wanted to be able to solo over his stuff. So he said, teach me the scales. Well, just so you know, the way I do it, there's about 14 scale patterns, and then you learn to move them around the neck. Um, and so I wrote them all down and said, now learn to move them around the neck. A little bit of basic applied music theory is all it takes to be able to do that. So, uh, and it starts with learn the root notes on the sixth string. We count from the floor. I know it's counterintuitive. Uh, but if you can learn the root notes up that, the low E, low and high, is what we hear, not what we see. I like when people go, oh, the high string. If you said that to a trumpet player, you say, I'm going high. And play a dad, he'd go, you are high. Uh, so be careful of that, all right? Of both <laughs> those things. So anyway, uh, my friend, I taught him scales. And some months later, we were out uh, playing uh, at an uh, open mic, I think, that I hosted. And uh, he'd gotten up, and I'd gotten up, and uh, some other uh, young guy came over to us, and he was like, yeah, how do you get so good? And before I really had a chance to answer, my friend chimed in. He said, learn your scales. He said, I learned my scales just some months ago, and my chords have improved. Well, it's true. That's one of the biggest reasons to learn the scales. Your chords will improve. Why? When, when it looks like you're just moving all the fingers mostly at the same time, slow it down. They're moving individually. So when you're working scales, you know, up and down the neck, your, uh, your fingers are, or your digits are, are strengthening individually, and that is going to improve your skit, your, uh, your chord playing. Um, especially if you decide you want to get into, you know, you know, jazzy, stuff like that. By the way, adding a seven to a chord doesn't make you jazz, but it is cool. I like seven chords myself. Right. So, uh, Anyway, uh, just a quick rundown of uh, a great approach I have always found for uh, learning the pentatonic scale forms. So we take our four fingers, we number them, right? One, two, three, four, okay? So then those four fingers can span four frets. Do you need to hold them down like I'm doing and have them always spanning four frets? Not necessarily. If you have to move your hand a little bit, that's perfectly okay. Just keep track of where you are. Now. When you look at tablature, they're writing out the uh, the fret number, okay? Uh, and you can learn scales that way, but, but the problem is when you change keys, of which there's quite a few, okay? So you want to be careful uh, about, you know, about that. With tablature, what I find is helpful about it is looking at it and recognizing the scale that's being used for that guitar solo, and then I'm able to learn it not only more quickly, but I'm able to learn it a, a little bit more in my own style. All right, when you imitate your parrot, parrots can speak, but they don't know what they're saying. So when a guitarist is playing note for note exactly as recorded, and, and they, yet they don't know where it's coming from, they're parroting something. You've seen it, you've heard it. That guitarist seems to have all the chops, and for some reason, I, wow, they're just not doing it for me. It's because they haven't made the music their own, that's all. That's all it is. No fault of theirs, probably how they were taught as well. It's no fault of their teachers. Uh, generations of guitarists have learned this way, okay? Um, but in, for, you know, in deeper examination, uh, anyway, I found that learning it and making it your own is quite effective, all right? Even classical artists would do that. My old classical guitar teacher said, yeah, I might play Bach, but it's mine when I play it. You know, so just, you know, nice little, nice little tip, a deep philosophical one. All right, so here we go with the finger number patterns. Now when I say open, I mean open string. 
you can memorize, and this is what I do with my students, you can memorize the pentatonic scale. So form one of the pentatonic scale, generally considered the first form of the pentatonic scale, is uh, this one. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I've got my four fingers spanning four frets, right? I'm not. I'm going to play the open string. I'm never going to use my first finger in this, but I'm going to recite the pattern out loud from low to high. All right. Open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three. Say that like five times out loud. Seriously, out loud. I know it feels remedial, like you're kindergarten. Well, you might be if you don't know your pentatonic scales, but it's cool because you'll have a graduate degree in like two years if you assert yourself, all right? So uh, open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three, over and over again, right? And then I go and I play it. And it's, the numbers are relating to the finger numbers as they span whatever four frets I'm over, okay? So in this case, because I'm using open strings, I'm over the first four frets. So coincidentally, it would also read in tablature in this fashion, but it's from here that it's gonna change. So here we go, open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three, and just reverse it. And try not to stumble, but you're gonna get comfortable with making mistakes. Nothing blows up in this laboratory. So, you know, take your take risks when you play. It's perfectly sick. All right. Um, so, uh, and typically anything that you play forwards, you can do backwards without giving it any thought. It's better, in fact, not to give it thought. There's some studies of, of children and how they can, you know, you show them how to do something forwards and they can automatically do it backwards, especially in music. So trust that child part of your brain to, to just do its job and you'll be fine. Okay? A lot of mindset stuff goes into learning instruments. It's crazy. So now I'm going to go to form two, which takes over where form one ended. At that note right there, for those of you who are uh, taking notes, that's a G on the sixth string right there. Now I'm going to go to that G. By the way, I'm playing E minor. Is that open E? E minor pentatonic is form one. In this case, G major. Every major key has a relative minor and vice versa. A lot of information here. There's a little bit of, uh, uh, if I don't explain it, you don't probably need to worry about it yet. Uh, I believe in applied music theory, that is, learn it as you need it, as it applies to what you're doing. That does not mean don't learn it. Every one of my students learns how to read, and uh, it, it makes you a better player. Don't listen to anybody tells you otherwise, please. All right? Uh, it doesn't mean there aren't a lot of great players who don't read on the guitar, but trust me, it's worth it. The best players I know read. So here we go. Form two. Pre preaching's done. Form two. All right. So here we go. It's two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, two, four. Again, spanning four frets. Duh. Okay. And so it's in two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, two, four, and then reverse. It. Okay. So here we are. Two in finger numbers. Two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, two, four, and reverse. It. And I hit that. Now I'll go to form three, and I'm kind of going through these fairly quickly, all right? Uh, I teach online if you're interested, and contact me, all right? But this is mainly just a reference. Be careful about stuff you find on YouTube, by the way. Uh, it doesn't teach you everything. Don't assume that you can learn everything through YouTube. You're going to miss something. You need a human interaction. Find a live teacher if you can, all right? I really, I highly recommend it. You need that personal touch, all right? There's going to be things that you're missing that, that you won't get through just videos, all right? So take what you can from these, but uh, make sure you got somebody who can work directly with you. Human connections go a long way. Now form three takes over where form two left off. There's my pinky, all right? Now they're all major or minor pentatonic. They're extensions now. In other words, forms three, four, and five are extensions of the ones I've already played. What I'm doing is I'm going through several octaves of the of the guitar here, right? So now, now scratching your face is not necessary for the next skip, but you're welcome to if you need it. So the next one is one three one three one three. Move down one four. Move up one four one three. You want to include this one movement out of position on the only pentatonic form that does this. You want to include that thought process. Okay, that I'm moving out of position. Otherwise, you're going to stumble. Please trust me on this, okay? So, uh, it's true. So, and, and we move down, which looks up. But remember, up and down is what you hear, not what you see. 
You know, right? You have to be able to communicate to other uh, musicians. So it's one, three, one, three, one, three, move down a fret, one, four, move back into position, one, four, one, three, and then reverse it. I'm doing my best to make it possible for you to see it. It's hard to watch a guitar backwards. That's a skill unto itself. All right, so that's form three. Now form three brings me to here, okay? Now I'm gonna take my first finger, all right? And I'm going to go one, four, one, four, one, three, one, three, two, four, one, four. Okay, that's form four then. I'm getting almost there, all right? Now we're form four, left off, left off with my pinky there. I'm gonna put my second finger, spanning four frets. Now, the, the strings are further from the neck now, and the frets are closer together. So you're not having to stretch as far, but you might have to hold down the strings a little bit tighter. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Uh, the middle of the neck is probably the most comfortable place to play. That's the other thing, other thing these scale patterns will help you with, get you comfortable across the neck of the instrument. So that's a pretty good deal, don't you think? All right, so it's two, this one's symmetrical. Two, four, two, four, one, four, one, four, two, four, two, four. Say that five times out loud and then you... Okay, it's okay, you don't have to close your eyes. Uh, the idea that you should be able to close your eyes and play is, uh, well, most authentic musicians who close their eyes are doing it to get the distractions away, uh, out of their way. The distractions created by our vision, okay, the things we see. Also, our eyes can deceive us, looking at all these lines on the neck and everything, and the angle at which we see it, which is like that, you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, it, it's very easy to get distracted. So sometimes we we'll close our eyes, and, and then we pay closer attention to, to what we're feeling physically as well as perhaps emotionally. So we might be... So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually visualizing the neck of the guitar while I do that. But keep in mind, um, I saw Andre Segovia, one of the greatest classical guitarists that ever lived, like his second to last show before he died. Uh, he was 94 years old and still kicked butt, man. And, you know, the whole time his eyes were open and he was watching the neck of his instrument. So you don't have to close your eyes to play. There are people I think who close their eyes just to look like they should. I do the guitar face. You know, thing which is whatever it's all fun you know that's what it should be so then from four and five what are we where are we at now it's 12, 12 fret in this case for e minor g major okay i am now at the octave okay and i'm recreating i'm recreating a mistake let's see if i can't do it again all right so form one again now it's closed voice and that means there are no open strings one four one three one three one four one three one three one three one four one four and now we've closed the active all right so i'm not thinking 12th fret 15th fret 12 14 12 i'm thinking finger numbers one four one three one three one three one four one four why Oh, Phil, we decided to change the key. We're going to do it in A minor, not E minor. Okay, I go down here to A, fifth fret on the sixth string. One, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. So, hope that helps. Peace.